Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Devotions with the Deacon today. You know, I love being an Episcopalian for many reasons, but one of them is because I get to be part of the Worldwide Anglican Communion. It's really cool, and um, it's cool because of three things. Uh, first of all, all of us in the Anglican Communion all over the world share a common history with Christians throughout time. And we also share a common theology within the worldwide body of Christ. And we share a book of common prayer. And this is true throughout the world. The similarities of our, of our prayer books are amazing. And I find a whole lot of comfort and satisfaction um, out of knowing that every Sunday People all over the world are saying the same prayers that we say here at St. Mark's. People everywhere are celebrating the Eucharist. People are following the same church calendar, beginning with Advent, four weeks before Christmas. Their clergy wear the same vestments that Father Cook and Father Groff wear, and the deacons. They wear the same colors for the seasons of the year. They're reading the same lessons and psalms and gospel, uh, gospels that we are each and every week. But the other nice thing about being part of this communion is that our services are also, um, they also include some interesting differences from one country to the next that reflect specific cultures. For example, our prayer book here in the U.S. is almost identical to that of Great Britain and Canada, except for a few pretty important differences. For example, we don't pledge allegiance to the Queen, but they do. We do include Thanksgiving in our prayers, and they don't. In the late 20th century, many Anglican prayer books uh, got revised in numerous locations around the world. In the U.S., we revised our prayer book from the 1929 version to our current 1979 version, 50 years, giving more choices in language, in language and in services to better fit our diverse population. And about 10 years after that, one culture on the other side of the world published its revised prayer book. Its title is a New Zealand prayer book. This is what it looks like. This work took over 20 years to accomplish, to change from the Anglican Book of Common Prayer that centered on the English-speaking population of New Zealand. As many of you well know, New Zealand is not just a mini England. It includes indigenous cultures such as the Maori, and in recent years, the Maori language has been approved as an official language of the nation. Women were being ordained as priests, and um, everybody was beginning to realize that the unique and very delicate ecology of New Zealand uh, was really important. New Zealanders even had adopted an anti-nuclear stance. So these major social and cultural changes led to the recognition that a new prayer book was needed to celebrate and incorporate the rich and singular heritage of this wonderful place. The new prayer book for New Zealand basically has really all of the same components that ours does, but definitely in a totally different order. Also, Many prayers and sections are written in both Maori and English. I really enjoy two things about this prayer book. First, the language is lovely. It has a simplicity about it and also a musicality about it that's charming and filled with simple truth. And I love seeing the Maori interspersed with the English. Um, it's just like real life. Second, it offers more opportunities for daily prayer and for private prayer um, at home together or at home alone than we have in our Book of Common Prayer. For example, we have morning and evening prayers, and they have what they call midday and evening prayers, and those are very similar. 
But then, and we have shorter prayers. We have Compline and we have those daily devotions. They have two other sets of daily prayers. Uh, and in both cases, each has a prayer, um, a, a little service for each day of the week that's separate one from the other. The first set is called daily services and it still requires going to scripture to find readings and so forth, but it's not as involved as the classic midday or evening prayers. But the other set is even simpler and that's what I wanna share with you today. These simplest daily prayers are called daily devotions. Um, it's, it's like we have daily devotions. Uh, remember those little one page devotions that I showed you really early when we first started doing this? Um, these devotions though are longer than those were and a little more involved, but it's the same idea, but a little more involved. They're designed for people whose time is limited, but they are very satisfying to use. They, they have a completeness about them. So, if you have the New Zealand prayer book, these devotions are found starting on page 104. Um, and I'm going to tell you how they're set up. All of them are set up in these little daily devotions. But one neat thing about them is that each one of them, each day of the week, is given a theme. And that theme is one of the seven themes that are found in the Lord's Prayer. So there's a phrase from the Lord's Prayer that's a theme for each day of the week, for the morning prayer and the evening prayer. Um, and then within each of those, whether it's a morning prayer or an evening prayer, there's a statement of the theme for the day, there's a call to worship, there's a gospel reflection, it's not a gospel reading, but a reflection on something in the gospel, followed by silence for meditation. And then there is an epistle reflection, also found in the epistles. And that is followed by daily scripture, which is optional, if you want to go and figure out what the scripture is for the day or the week and read it. And then the fifth section is prayers. So what I want to do is have us pray together the morning prayer for Thursday. That's on page, found on page 123 of um, the New Zealand prayer book. And um, so find a comfy spot. And what I'm gonna do is just uh, read to you and I want you to listen and see how the words and the mood are the same or different from what we're accustomed to hearing. Uh, especially check out the prayers at the end. See if you notice any differences or similarities. Um, I'm going to be very interested. I'm hoping you all will respond and let me know um, what you think about this. It's just, it's different and yet it's still part of our culture and part of our tradition. So <clears throat> this is Thursday morning. The theme for this, which comes from the Lord's Prayer, is give us today our daily bread. And it's followed by the same thing in Maori, which I'm not gonna attempt to read because I have no idea how the pronunciation works, but there it is. And if you wanna figure it out, you can. Um, then we have the call to worship. None of us lives and none of us dies for ourselves alone. Living or dying, we belong to the Lord. Next is the gospel reflection. Jesus, you are the bread of life. Those who come to you will never be hungry. Those who believe in you will never thirst. You are the living bread from heaven. The bread you give is your own flesh and you give it for the life of the world. All who eat your flesh and drink your blood live in you and you in them. For your flesh is the food we need. Your blood is our salvation. All who eat your flesh and drink your blood have eternal life. Look to Jesus in the wilderness, breaking bread and feeding the multitude. 
Now we have some silence for meditation. I will tell you, I recognize these words. I've heard them before, but I think they were said by Jesus, not about him. I looked it up, uh, John, the Gospel of John, chapter six, uh, verse, starting with verse 35. Uh, I am the bread of life, the I am statements that Jesus made is where this came from. And then John 6, 51, I am the living bread from heaven. The bread you give is your own flesh, his own flesh, my own flesh, he said, he said. So this is turning it around and remembering what Jesus said he was, who he was. And it ends with this statement, look to Jesus in the wilderness, breaking bread and feeding the multitude. Then we have the epistle reflection, which begins with a, a line in Maori, but here's how it reads. Sparse sowing, meager reaping. But if we are generous, bountiful will be the harvest. So let us give what we can not with regret, nor from a sense of duty. God loves a cheerful giver. And when we help others, we will not just meet their needs. We will unleash a flood of gratitude to God. Many will give glory to God for our loyalty to the gospel and for our generosity. God loves a cheerful giver. And I can tell you that these ideas are found in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 to 8, basically. But they're stated differently, and I think that matters. So now we have the prayers. Our Father, give us today our daily bread. God of seed and growth and harvest, creator of need, creator of satisfaction. Give us, we pray, our daily bread, sufficient and assured for all. Give us also, we pray, the bread of life, and we shall have a care to feed the hungry and to seek for peace and justice in the world. Help us then to remember and to know that you are our life today and every day. You are the food we need now and forever. God, give us work till our life shall end and life till our work is done. Look kindly on our world, our God, as we suffer and struggle with one another. Look kindly on your church, driven by the same necessity, and may the light we have seen in Jesus illuminate and brighten all the world. Amen. I think uh, I'd be interested in what you think of that. I, I'm amazed as I read this and think about what's going on in the world today, and especially in America and all the turmoil that we're having uh, regarding racism, continued racism and discord and hatred and all the terrible things, um, that these prayers are very pertinent right here, right now amazingly this very day as I read them and they're just the prayers for Thursday. So um, I, I'll be interested in whether they brought any insight, comfort, um, uh, any, any sort of special feelings to you or if you found anything special about them. Um, you might want to take up perusing the uh, New Zealand prayer book a little bit more. It's a very interesting book. It's very uh, I think it's pretty amazing, and uh, I really enjoy having it. And um, I do, I am happy to uh, provide copies of the seven prayers in the in the daily devotions that we just read from the seven groups 
the prayers um, for each day of the week. If you would like copies of them, just send me an email at mhoward at stmarkspbg.org <clears throat> and um, that will be perfect and I will be glad to send those out. Let me know how to send them to you best. Um, in the meantime, uh, let's all pray for peace and resolution in this country. Let us let us pray that we can get through this hurdle as well as the pandemic. Um, we have a lot on our plates right now, but this too will be well and uh, God is with us and we have to remember that all the time. So let me just uh, thank you for being here today and I um, want you to be sure to stay connected and I look forward to seeing you next Thursday. Thanks and bye.